Dark Souls, a game defined by iconic bosses, oppressive dark fantasy settings, and grueling difficulty. I myself tried my hand at the Switch version not too long ago too. Well, mixed results. I am by no means great at, uh, well, video games now that you mention it, so it took me a while to get used to the combat and to stop pressing Y instead of the trigger buttons to attack in the middle of battle because I played too much Breath of the Wild so I keep freaking chugging all my Estes when I don't need to. <laughs> Slowly but surely, I made my way through what I assume is most of the game. That is, until I came upon this place, Anor Londo. More specifically, Tweedledee and Tweedle Dragonface, AKA Ornstein and Smug. These two are easily the most difficult boss I have ever fought in a video game, and I'm sad to say that I never managed to best them. It's a shame too, because I'm certain I only had like one, maybe two bosses left tops. But what if I told you that Dark Souls isn't actually a hard game? In fact, I don't think I could think of an easier game if I tried. No, the game of Dark Souls isn't hard, you just don't know how to play it. Now, don't worry, that's not your fault. You don't know how to play it because you were never taught how to play it. Technically, yes, this game does have a very brief tutorial section in the beginning, but for the most part, it has the same teaching philosophy of Bean Dad. Remember Bean Dad? They hand you a can of beans and a can opener and they say, good luck, hope you don't starve. And then you tell him, Dad, I've never seen a can opener in my life. Maybe if you showed me how to do it and the mechanisms behind it, I would better understand how it works and then I could easily open any can I want in the future. And Bean Dad gives you some dumb spiel about teachable moments and kids these days being too coddled and participation trophies and the next thing you know you're fighting this big fat demon guy and you're still pressing Y because you've played too much Breath of the Wild. Well, I've got great news for all of you. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use that damn can opener. Today, I'm giving you some tips and tricks on how to finally get good at Dark Souls. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to start a brand new file with a brand new hero. So, allow me to introduce to you, Reginald. No, no, no. Sir Reginald. Ooh, look at that handsome devil. If looks could kill, and they will. So one intro cutscene featuring a whole bunch of bosses that I've never seen before, which made me question if I had actually made any progress my first playthrough at all later. And just like that, you've been thrown into the fray. Or... More accurately, the fray has been thrown to you. Like I said, there's a little tutorial section where they explain some of your basic moves. They show you this weird, like, bottle opener that's on the side of the can opener for some reason. They kill a few guys, and you start to feel good. But don't be fooled. These messages are leading you down a false path. One that will only lead to despair and lost souls. Literally. You see... The game gives you a lot of different tools you can use, but only one of them is going to open that can. The first move the game teaches you is the normal slash. It's generally fast, doesn't use that much stamina, and it does a moderate amount of damage. This is a pretty safe move that will most likely be your bread and butter for most of the game. If you're a freaking coward, Dark Souls is all about big damage. Kill the thing before it can kill you. Tip number one, always heavy slash. Always. Oh, 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 let me hide behind my shield and poke at you with my sword for 10 minutes. No, you get in there, you kill the zombie, and you get out. Yeah, sure, it's got a longer wind up, but if anything, that just makes it more cinematic. Stamina, who needs it? You can recover that sh when you're dead. <sighs> okay, okay, got a little too enthusiastic there. Let's uh, take it down a notch. 
If I could get serious for a moment, I once had a teacher who gave me some very wise advice that has stuck with me for the rest of my life. And it's a philosophy that I think can help you not only in Dark Souls, but with all aspects of your life. They told my class, never use semicolons. You'll always get it wrong. The same can be said for parrying. Just don't attempt it. So by this point in your playthrough, hopefully you've dispatched all of your enemies with one swift blow of your heavy attack. But what about the enemies that don't go down in a few slashes? Like this big demon boss guy that shows up like 10 minutes into the first area. Do I cower and run in fear or do I stand my ground, throw my shield up and slay the beast like the hero I am? The first one, get the hell out of dodge. In fact, dodge roll the hell out of dodge because you are now ready to learn the most sacred of techniques. Something only true souls masters have perfected. The plunging attack. Find a ledge above the boss, deliver an epic one-liner, and then mm, leap down into that boss's head and unclog that sucker. Use it. Abuse it. The plunging attack is life. A lot of people don't realize this, but Dark Souls is a very funny game. No, trust me, it is. Despite all the drab colors and general sense of existential hopelessness, apparently it's freaking hilarious according to all the NPCs at least, because literally every single one, and I mean every single one, will start echo laughing after spouting whatever cryptic nonsense they have to say. Ah, another wayward soul meandering along the path to obscurity. If you seek the cistern of ambivalence, you needeth travel yonder through the hills of lassitude. But be wary, a wretched fiend lurks in those waters, and only the arrow of atrophy can pierce its impregnable hide. To find the arrow, journey north southward through the boorish valley of the eleven sanctimonious lords. The boon you seek lies within a most perplexing labyrinth in the cranium of your own making. After that, Bring the bell of slumbering to the yonder peak of New Glacklosmishlmrichnendor. It is there you will find the deacons of the high new nocturne inside the shrine of the silver monkey. Once there, good luck, adventurer, and heed my words lest you lose all, all your souls and punch a hole in your television. <laughs> so, uh, tip number four, I guess? Just start laughing. Seems to work well enough for them. At this point in the game, you've escaped the undead asylum, yucked it up with a couple of patrons from the Firelink Shrine, and are ready to begin your adventure in earnest. But before you do, I have a confession. You see, I lied to you earlier. There is a secret technique, one so powerful that I did not think it wise to teach you until you had proven your commitment. But now, I think it's high time we lose those training wheels and rebrand the undead bird to the... to the... the dead bird. Got him. Tip number five. Ignore tip number one. Don't heavy attack. That sh is for babies, weaklings, amateurs, cowards. You want to get good at Dark Souls, then leaping attacks are your only friend. It doesn't matter what man, monster, or god above stands in your way. Flick that left stick forward and hit that attack button and watch them crumble before you. Zombie, dead. Zombie with a shield, demolished. These agents of literal Satan himself, deleted gone like they never even existed in the first place. It's like its own mini plunging attack. There is literally not a single downside to using this move and this move exclusively for your entire playthrough. Honestly, I'm not even sure why the rest of the buttons are even here. Now, a lot of people will tell you that this isn't a very good strategy. They'll say that Dark Souls is a game all about patience, about carefully moving in and out of combat, tactically using your shield to block enemy attacks, and rolling out of the way of any unblockable attacks. It's about carefully observing your enemies, 
learning their skill sets and weaknesses, and finding the perfect time to strike. Those people are liars, wicked serpents, trying to get you to waste your time and keep you from ever truly getting good. You want to kill that baddie? Then you gotta be bold. Don't wait for them to make a move and open themselves up. You are the can opener. Plunge your big old sword into them and pull those beans out yourself. And shields? They're like kale. They look cool, they make you feel fancy, but humanity was never meant to actually use them. Never stop running. Never stop slashing. Never stop the bloodshed. Stamina is for the weak. You, my friend, are getting good. Carve a bloody path of destruction and domination and grab every single piece of loot you see. Zombie rags that you'll never use. Uh, these things called humanity that I still don't really know the function of. This dope battle axe. Hell yeah! Tip number seven, use that dope battle axe. Sure, uh, it's a lot slower than your starting sword, but it... Oh, uh, uh, God, it, uh, it looks really cool. Crap, God. And, uh, it, uh, it does... Uh, mm, does a lot of, a lot of damage. Oh, okay, okay. Tip number eight, don't use this dope battle axe. As you're progressing through this totally innocent suburban neighborhood like Jason freaking Voorhees, you may come across a situation like this. You see an item just, just sitting there at the end of this totally innocent looking alley. The only problem, there's a big freaking guy in the way. So the question becomes, what do? Now, you could preserve your souls, play it safe, be the bigger man, and just walk away. Maybe come back when you're stronger and you can actually handle it? Heck, 90% of the items in this game don't even seem to really do anything. Or, or, you could warm up those fingers a little bit and follow tip number nine. Leave no item ungrabbed. You could slowly walk down those stairs, boldly, Sneak up behind that bastard that thinks he's better than you, and you can show him where to stick his sword. And when that inevitably fails, you can bravely run away. Summon every ounce of courage that you have deep within your soul to tuck your mighty tail between your legs and hide until he forgets about you and goes back to his post. And when he doesn't forget about you, you can keep running all the way back to the bonfire, drain your entire stamina bar, and get there as quickly and boldly as you can, and rest at that bonfire to reset every enemy. And then, when you realize that, for whatever reason, this guy doesn't reset, and he bum rushes you and murders you in cold blood right next to the bonfire, do you give up? No! You bravely rush back over there for round two, you stab that knight right in the butt, and you run back up those stairs. Juke that sucker out your, like you're playing NBA Jam with him. You know, do a little, do a little do -si do And beeline it for that item. Grab the blue tear stone ring. That's pretty okay, I guess, early game. And then run down this side alley that you've never been down before. Surely, the game developers would put something back here that could aid in your escape. And not just have it end in some random cliff, right? Wrong! Dark Souls isn't your friend, but worry not. You may be stuck between a rock and a literal bottomless pit, but does that mean you can just give up? Do you maybe use one of these nifty little items called a homeward bone that lets you teleport back to the last bonfire you were at? No! In this game, you get to keep any and all items you pick up even if you die, so you stand your ground. You look death in the face and you tell them that the pride comes before the fall. Literally. Tip number 10, never. Use a homeward bone. And that's it. The 10 tips to help you get good at Dark Souls. Keep these 10 tricks in mind, and you can turn Dark Souls into Picnic Simulator. All right, class. Now it's time for your final exam. To test your knowledge of the 10 tips and tricks and see if you really have getting good at Dark Souls, you're going to be taking on this Ganon-looking guy. Question number one. When you attack him, do you A, use quick slashes, B, use heavy slashes, or C, use the dash attack straight out of Smash Bros? If you said C, you're wrong! No, you turn around, you climb this ladder, you leap from the tower, and you hit him with a plunging attack. Though, I will give you some partial credit if you use the dash attack to take out the little goons up top. Question 2. 
After performing the plunging attack, do you A. Carefully hide behind your shield and dodge any attacks you can while you learn his abilities and how to exploit them? Or B. Go full Rambo on his ass and get yourself a nice pulled pork dinner. WRONG AGAIN! The correct answer was actually turn around, climb this ladder, leap from the tower, and hit him with a plunging attack! Question 3. Now that you've successfully performed two plunging attacks, do you A. Try and- NO! WRONG! You turn around, you climb this ladder, you leap from the tower, and you hit him with a plunging attack! Open that can of beans! Congratulations! Now that you've successfully unclogged that can of beans, it's time for your fourth and final question. Should you now A. Use the homeward bone that you literally just picked up to return to the bonfire and cash in all your experience before you press on into unknown territory and potentially lose it all? Or B. Do you keep on charging headfirst into the unknown, run into this charred bridge for some items, and get murdered by a random dragon about two seconds later? If you answered B, congratulations! You have officially passed Dark Souls 101. You, my friend, just get it good. So, with these 10 new tricks in mind, Hornstein, Smog, get ready to get can opened. Ah!